All right, a quick video on how to properly solder up a kill mode cat pack to your speed control. Uh, so I just have an extra speed control here. Uh, I've already had this one soldered up before, but I unsoldered it just to show this video so you can properly solder your uh, ESC or your kill mode cat pack to your ESC. It's a, a three pack shorty. Um, so first thing to do is make sure you have your proper tools, uh, your exhaust fan, mask, Good soldering iron. A good soldering iron is critical. Uh, if you don't have a good enough soldering iron, uh, it's not an easy task. Uh, so, good soldering iron. I use a track power TK950. It doesn't have to be this good, but a good soldering iron, nice and hot. Um, the next really important thing is good solder. I use a 6040 uh, rosin core. Um, and then I like flux. I don't know if anyone uses flux, but flux is your friend. You get a little bottle of flux that'll last you five years. Um, so, the first thing let me show you is uh, your Kimmo cat pack will come with pre tinned wires. I already tinned the wires for you, but in the case that you want to shorten the wires or re solder it, or if you're like me and you like to hook it to a bullet connector so you could switch them out in between cars, um, like I said, these will be pre tinned so you could actually solder these directly up. They already have a decent amount of tin on them, so you'll be good. But let me show you first how to tin a wire if you have to cut these for whatever reason and re tin the wire. So, what you first want to do is shear it. I've already sheared this one. You expose, you know, eighth inch, quarter inch of wire. Now, again, I like to use flux. Not everyone uses flux, but I put a little couple drops of flux into a bottle cap and just get a little flux on there. Flux really helps. The next thing I use is a pair of ice grips. You don't need any fancy tools with the alligator clips mm -hmm. and all these erector set looking things. Very simple. A heavy. Um, this will work with needle-nose pliers, pliers, anything heavy, just set it in there like that. That's going to hold tight. Um, we're going to wear a mask for safety first, and again we have our smoke absorber fan. Actually, I'm not going to wear the mask because you won't be able to hear me, it's muffled, but wear a mask, safety first. Alright, so we got our, our solder's already uh, warmed up. Um, cut a chunk of wire off of the roll instead of trying to solder with the roll it's painting that. So this is going to be really quick. You know, if you got a good so hot soldering iron, it's going to be nice and quick. So let's get the smoke absorber in place here. Zoom down. Okay, so I have this flux on there. You're going to see with that flux on there, this thing's going to sizzle instantly. And it's going to be quick. You don't want to over tin it because it'll tin way down the wire and then you have a solid wire and you won't be able to bend it or flex it or anything. So you want it to tin down maybe, you know, a quarter inch into the the uh, wire. So put it on, you're going to hear it sizzle, heating up. Feed it in, feed it in, feed it in, feed it in. Get a little more fed in there, spin it. Just make sure you're covering everything with solder. It doesn't take much. So it's going to feed right in there. So that's plenty of solder in there now. Now let it suck in. Perfect. So that's pretty quick. Um, what I would normally do is let this cool, and then I'll, I'm not going to do it now because it's hot, it'll shoot solder in my face. I'll usually take a little Dremel and just clean that extra flux off. You don't want that extra flux on there. And that's a properly tinned wire right there. Okay. So, if we're going to do the ESC, this one I told you I've already exposed the wire because I already had a cap back on here at one point. Um, but it's very simple. You want to go as close to the ESC as possible. And then just, you know, take an X-Acto knife and cut a square chunk out of the wire here. Don't cut into the wire. Just cut the, the, co the covering off of the wire. Just a nice little square, maybe a quarter inch. Um, you're going to end up covering that with either electrical tape or if your ends are exposed, you can put uh, some shrink wrap on there. So again, I like flux. Flux really helps, especially if you don't have a really hot soldering iron. So use a little flux on a Q-tip. Wet that up, okay. Now again, we're gonna tin these. These ones are already tinned, but let's make sure. Cause like I said, I wanna show you in the video. So get this nice and high. Now you don't wanna hold this on there too long cause it's gonna heat into the ESC and you have a chance of, you know, melting something on internally. So get that flux nice and hot. Feed it, feed it, feed it, feed it, feed it. Let that suck in. really all you need. That flux really helps get that uh, tin soaking in there. And you'll know these are tinned properly. And that one 
didn't take really well. There we go. Yeah, it's going on there. Okay. So that's nice and tin, and you'll be able to tell because it's going to be solid around the edges. It all sucked in, you know, a little here and here. So you want it to be, as opposed to flexy there, you know, now it's got a little solid inside, so you know it's tin and it's pulled inside. Okay. Now the orientation is very important. So if your speed control sits like this and your battery sits this direction, you know, and you want the, the cap pack to sit this way, make sure you, you figure it out. Because if it's sitting this way and this is your negative over here and you have your positive this way, don't mess them up. So I already know which way I want this set up. Just make sure your orientation is proper when you do it because, you know, if not, your cap pack's going to be twisted over and tied up like that. So I already know the orientation of this one because I've done this one already before. So you can tape these wires back, get them out of the way so you don't end up melting them, but I'm not going to worry about it because I don't even know if the ZSC is any good anymore. Um, so make sure you are, your polarity is proper. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. And you're just going to go back and get this a little warm. You don't want it to be cold because then it's not going to flow. Okay. And what I like to do is put a nice little drop solder on there. Now this is difficult because I'm backwards. I'm trying to make the video face this way. Um, so let me get myself oriented here. Uh, this might not be my best moment because like I said I'm trying to get the video to angle properly and I, I would usually flip this over and do it the other way. So what we're going to do here is heat this, let this flow. You're going to see this flowing. See it flowing in there? I don't know if you can see that on the video but it's starting to sizzle a little. Now just put it on there and smush. It's going to take right in. This is much easier. Oops, see what I did there? Don't do that. Remember I said tape those wires back <laughs> so you don't melt them? And I ended up melting them. So that one's tinned up nice and proper. Didn't melt all the way through, but that's a good example as to why I said to tape these back and keep them out of the way. So I know that one's in there really nice and tight. I'm actually pulling on it pretty hard and it's not going to come loose. So same thing on this side. Heat that up a little bit. Put a nice little chunk of solder on there. Watch this flow. Solder's flowing straight through. That one's nice and hot. It actually dripped off a little bit. If you have a helping hand that you can have two people do this to keep these wires as straight as possible, it makes it much easier. Now what I will recommend is don't try and orient things with the soldering iron in your hand because you will burn yourself. Okay, the wire's still pretty hot. I'm not going to move it because I got a good sol hot soldering iron, but I know it's flowing. Now watch that flow in. Hold it there. Now you can always... Okay. This is much, much easier if I was facing the other direction, but don't worry about it. Just stay. Let me throw some more solder in there. Flow, flow, flow. I could watch it flowing into the... And perfect. Right. So, that little chunk right there, melt it off the side, I would actually throw that back in there. Now, one mistake I see people make is they over solder, which I've actually over soldered this one a little, because like I said, it was already soldered before, so it already had solder in there, uh, but we can throw that in there nice, there we go. Now what you're just going to make sure you do is make sure it's good tight solder, it's fused up really well, now it's fused up nice and good, and that's really it, so again this one would sit this way with the battery, and this in the car would probably be oriented over here somewhere. Again, make sure these get either shrink wrapped up or, you know, properly insulated so they don't touch. If they touch, you're going to hear a nice loud pop. You'll probably screw some stuff up. So that's really it. So.
that you're properly soldered up, come on, cat pack. Enjoy.